Welcome to The Past People, where I will talk about the people of the past. Anna Marie Marisha de Austria, Andy for short, was the oldest daughter of King Philip III of Spain and his second cousin and wife, Margaret of Austria. She was born on the 22nd of September, 1601. She was named after her grandmother, Anne of Austria, fourth wife of King Philip II. Her second name, Maria, was given to honour the Virgin Mary and reflect the family's religion. Her third name, Marisha, due to being born on the day of St. Maurice. From a young age, she held the titles Infanto of Spain and Portugal. Although being Spanish, she was called Anne of Austria, as the Spanish royals belonged to the House of Austria at the time. As a young girl, Anna grew up with her very loving parents and siblings at the Royal Alcazar in Madrid. This was unusual for the time, as it was normal for children to be kept apart from their families. When Anna was ten, her mother died while giving birth to her eighth child in 1611, when her mother was only 27 years old. Anne was the eldest at only 10 years old, but she was expected to take care of the younger children, who would then go on to call her mother. It was during this time her father had been in contact with the French court and sought to marry his daughter into another royal family to keep her prestigious bloodline and to improve the political powers between France and Spain. She had an arranged marriage and was engaged at 10 years old to the new King of France, Louis XIII, who was the same age. It was also arranged for her brother Philip to marry Louis XIII's sister, Elizabeth. For Anne to become the Queen of France, she had to give up her succession rights to the Spanish crown. However, her father looked after her best interests and ensured that if the King of France should die and leave his daughter childless and widowed, that she would return back to Spain with all of her dowry and previous rights to the Spanish crown. Her dowry was made up of 500,000 livres along with many beautiful gems and gowns. Anne and Louis were married on the 18th of October 1615 by proxy on the same day that Anne's brother Philip married Louis's sister, Elizabeth. The brides and grooms travelled to an uninhabited island so that the brides could be exchanged. Anne became Queen of France and Elizabeth would become the future Queen of Spain. This would become a new tradition and Louis XIV also met his bride, Marie Therese, on this island as well as Charles II of Spain with Marie Louise and again with Louis XV with Marie Anne Victoire. Anne and Louis married in person on the 15th of December the same year at 14 years old. It was on this night that the king's regent, his mother, would encourage a pair to consummate their marriage in front of her, despite being so young and having little idea on what to do. This left Louis and Anne reeling and it took another four years before they would attempt the deed again. Louis would only visit his wife in the mornings and evenings and that was it. Anne was deeply unhappy at this point. Her mother-in-law was still calling herself the current Queen of France, leaving Anne unsure of her identity in the French court. Anne had a major culture shock. She continued to dress in Spanish fashion, as well as only surrounding herself with other Spanish ladies of the court, which left members of the French court reeling. Louis and Anne were expected to produce an heir but hardly knew each other and they struggled to communicate as Anne had little interest in learning French. This caused tension between the couple and the situation worsened and the distance between them grew further. Louis was also struggling. His mother was getting in the way of his reign and so in retaliation he had his mother's favourite Conico Conico assassinated. It was during this time he turned to his new wife for reassurance and to establish himself fully in the court. He needed an heir. Duke de Lunes came along and encouraged Anne to spend more time with French ladies to learn the language. He encouraged her to change her wardrobe and start to take on the French customs. His efforts worked and the pair were getting to know each other in and outside of the bedroom. When they were 18, they shared a bed again and Louis became increasingly affectionate towards Anne. Anne became pregnant but lost the child, so they tried again, and on the 14th of March, 1622, the Queen complained of stomach pain and she lost the child again after enjoying herself on the Louvre 
with friends. Louis was furious and blamed her for their loss, resulting in the breakdown of their relationship yet again. The Duke then died, resulting in the relationship taking a further dive as there was no one invested in keeping the pair civil with each other. As if Anne's luck couldn't get any worse, and she was slowly falling further out of favour with her king. She was then involved in a scandal with the King of England's favourite, the Duke of Buckingham. It was arranged for Charles I of England to marry King Louis's sister, Henriette Marie, in 1625. His favourite, the Duke of Buckingham, was in charge of exchanging the bride over from France to England, but during the voyage where both Anne and the Queen's mother joined the bride, he is alleged to have fallen in love with Anne, and it is rumoured that they met secretly in a secluded garden. Although it is not certain what happened, the valet de chambre heard Anne cry as the Duke of Buckingham attempted to force himself onto her, scratching her thighs. As was often, Anne, as the woman, was partly blamed for the altercation, leaving Louis so angry that he banished Buckingham from ever returning to France again. Further scandal was to occur, and fears were growing that Louis may be removed from the throne, as he had no heir after ten years of marriage. This is when it is alleged that Anne and his mother had plotted against her own son, the king, to arrange Anne to be married to his brother Gaston, who would take the crown of France if Louis were not to have any children. Letters were found on Madame de Fargus, who had fled from France to Brussels after she was used to spy on Anne. Anne denied being involved, but Louis was still furious. In 1635, 20 years after they wed, at the age of 14, there was still no heir in sight. The marriage had been arranged to improve the relationship between France and Spain, and this was wavering thin. This is when France declared war on Spain, much to Anne's dismay. The Queen of France remained in close contact with her family in Spain, and attempted to send secret letters to her brother, Philip, as well as the Spanish ambassador, and it seemed that she was in support of Spain over France. This is when the Cardinal grew suspicious and demanded that her letters be read before being sent, completely invading her privacy. Louis banned her from a few of her favourite parts of her life, such as visiting convents without permission, as well as never being allowed on her own. Her entire household was replaced with people loyal to the King and the Cardinal, meaning she was continuously supervised and spied on, reporting on her every move. The relationship between the King and Queen had never been so bad. There was very little hope left for an heir, and it seemed to be beyond repair. However, during a storm, Louis was forced to cancel his trip and stay at the same residence as the Queen. There were no beds fit for a King, except that of the Queen's, and so it was during this time that the Queen conceived and the pregnancy went well. On the 5th of September 1638, the Queen gave birth to a son, who was to become the future King Louis XIV. Again, two years later, in 1640, she would have another boy, Philippe. Although Louis was overjoyed that he now had two heirs to the throne, he never fully trusted Anne again, and so when he died in 1643, leaving Anne widowed, he put a regency council in his will to limit her powers over the running of the kingdom. This was overturned quickly, and within days her son overturned the decision to ensure his mother ruled France as regent alongside the newly appointed Prime Minister, Cardinal Mazarin. The Queen was undermined once again, just like she was by her mother-in-law, as a young woman, as members of the court saw her incapable of being up to the role. Some of them plotted against her, made rumours, or just disagreed with her politics. Her life would again be far from peace when a series of civil wars in France broke out between 1648 and 1653. She fled from Paris several times, taking her two little boys with her, travelling from one place to another in a bid to avoid capture and imprisonment. When Louis XIV, her son was old enough, and stepped down from regency and only gave him guidance on religion and his behaviour. Louis XIV had his marriage arranged with Anne's niece, Marie Therese, and France gained a new queen in 1660. Anne would step down from politics altogether when the Prime Minister, Mazarin, died. He retired to the convent, which he founded 40 years earlier. Anne had always been lucky with good health, but in 1663 she became desperately ill with breast cancer. She had a tumour in her left breast and it grew rapidly, leaving the doctors helpless for a cure. 
The doctors used a few methods to rid her of her illness, but cancer was not understood at the time. They tried bloodletting, which is where the blood is drained from the patient in the hope to remove the illness from the body. This did not work, but it left her even more weak than before. After this, they decided to remove her breast, but rather than do it in one go, which would certainly result in infection and death, they decided to remove her breast bit by bit over several weeks. This left the Queen Mother in agony with inflammation. The doctor's next move was to put hemlock, a poisonous plant into her body to stop her body from growing the tumour. When this didn't work, they concluded that the cancer needed something to feed on rather than feeding on the person, and so it was planned to insert pork or beef into the wound so that the cancer would feed on that instead. Other attempts included taking the salt from Lake Erie, from a priest in Orleans, and an ointment made from belladonna and rock ash. None of these worked and her condition was worsening. She was then diagnosed erysipelas in May 1665, two years after her initial breast cancer diagnosis and many painful procedures. This is a common bacterial infection of the superficial layer of the skin. She had this on her arm and shoulder, so the doctors decided to cut it open, bringing Anne further pain and suffering. It is alleged that the Queen Mother's room smelt like rotten meat and ointments and she was left in agonising pain from the inevitable full amputation of her breast to the bone. Anne was moved to the Louvre and spent her time praying in the company of her sons. Her cancer had spread further to her other breast and her lungs. They did consider another amputation, but this would have been too painful and she refused further treatment. Three years after her initial diagnosis in 1666, it became clear that Anne would not survive much longer. Her sons were devastated and she worsened steadily. She said her goodbyes on the 18th of January as the court was parading past her bed. Just as a monarch giving birth, their death was also a big event and therefore her death became a public one. Anne lost consciousness after midnight and died around 5 o'clock in the morning on the 20th of January. 1666. She was buried at St. Denis and her heart, according to her own wishes, brought to Catholic Church of the Val de Grace to rest among the other 45 embalmed hearts, past kings and queens of France. Louis forever treated this day, his mother died in a very special way. He retired early and no balls, salons or other amusements were held on the anniversary of her death. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.